How's it going YouTube? Today we're going to change this into this. Right, we all know on modern cars they've all got these nice radio systems, they've all got the sat nav, they've all got Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, all that sort of thing. They're quite nice, aren't they? How I see it, there's three types of car stereos. You've got the old cars, they've got the single dim, the double dim radios, we've changed a few of those already. Then you've got the new cars that's got the nice radios in, they've always got the CarPlay and everything. And then you've got the kind of like the middle ones that are about 2010 to 2015 sort of age, probably a bit earlier on some of them. And they've got the integrated radios like this. This is a 2010 Fiesta. As you can see, it's, uh, it's got the integrated radio. I've got a little phone holder there that I use for the sat nav. It's got hands-free and all that sort of stuff. But to change this radio out, it's not easy, is it? So I've teamed up with Sikane. They provide radios that fit these sort of things. So they've given me one to fit. I'm going to fit it to this. First, we'll go and have a look at it out of the box, shall we? Oh, and before we go and have a look, I'm literally, I'm going to make this up as we go along. So we're going to find out how hard it is to fit. I've had a quick Google just to see how to take the original radio out of this dashboard. So it doesn't look too difficult, but I'm literally, I'm not going to Google anything more than that. We're going to take the bits. We're going to see how hard it is to plug in. Right, I need to have a little bit of a shuffle about here, get this Fiesta closer to the garage. This is one of your usual double din type, uh, the old one. This is a, a 2001 Toyota MR2, if anybody's not seen it before. Uh, as you can see, that's got the old double din standard size radio, so these are a bit easier to change out. The integrated ones are a bit more difficult, so I'll have a swap about and then we'll go and have a look inside at the new radio. Right, so if I have a look, under this desk here, that's the box. I'll pull it out, let's have a quick look what we get in the box, shall we? Right, straight out of the box, we get another box. In there, let's have a quick look. Right, we've got this nice little package here. Let's pull out this onto the desk and have a quick look what we get. Right, obviously the first and the most important thing, we've got the stereo system itself. As you can see, this is a full replacement for the dash with the vents there and we've got the button for the hazard lights and things like that. And then it's got an extra trim. This extra trim goes on the back of there, I assume, to fill up that little bit. On the back, we've got all the plugs for the loom. Uh, we'll have a look at that later. We get another bag and in that bag, this has got all the essentials, all the little looms and everything else we'll need. We'll not look through these. Uh, these are literally everything we need, GPS aerial, and to plug this in to the standard system. There's a link on their website here. If we look down, uh, somewhere down here, there is a wiring diagram at the back. Um, I'll use this off my phone and we'll figure out how to plug it in as we go along. So there's not much else to say on the bench. Let's get out to the car and get the original stock radio out and then we can start fitting this and see how we can get it to go. Right, first thing you want to do is get a cheap set of these trim tools. These are off Amazon, I think. I'll stick a link below. These are useful for everything, so you're not scratching your dashboard when you're taking things to pieces. So according to Google, this bit here, we can get something just under there and prise it up. And, and that should just unclip. Let's have a play and see if we can get it to unclip, shall we? Right, there we are. You can you can see the clips underneath where it where it clipped on. So that's that out now. Uh, just down here, there's some screws. These look like little Torx bits, so I'll get a Torx bit so I can unscrew these two there. And the same here over the back of this clock, there's some two little Torx bits here as well. So I'll take those out as well. Right, there we are, T28 Torx bit. Let's get those out. I'll take these two out as well while I'm at it. Right, there you are. That's just got one plug in the back. I'll leave that there for now. Right, that's how all that out. Next job is just down here. There's a little flap that pulls down. So if I just get this trim tool in here, hopefully we can just pull that down. That's clipped off there, look nicely. Right, apparently now what we can do is get a trim tool under these little bits here, prise it up and all that should come forward. So let's do that. This still feels quite solid. As you can see, there's two little bolts there 
as well. So what I might do is take those out. I don't know if they're holding anything, but I'll take them out anyway and then see if that helps. Right, that's that clipped out. So we've just got one plug in here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll unclip this now. And then that removes all that. We can have a look at that later because I'll need those vents. Right, this should be just clipped in. So if I get my fingers behind it and give it a good tug, this should just come out there like that. Let's pull that right out of the way. All right, this has just got a few in the back. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll unplug these bits. And then these are the bits we've got to plug into the new stereo system. And then up the top, push this little clip out of the way. And then we've got one more and this plug there. Right, hopefully now, that should be all ready now to fit the new stereo system. So let's go and get that and see if we can figure out how it all goes. Right, there we are, got everything out. There's the head unit, uh, wire in there, that little trim there. This here is gonna sit looking something like that. And then we've got to get all the little trim bits on. Right, one thing I've noticed is these little metal bits uh, on the back of this top bit there, these little metal clips, we need to take these off because on these new bits, there's the post there, look, for, for these clips to sit on. So we need to transfer all these across. First thing we need to do now is take this bit. Uh, we've got some little Torx bits in the back of there to take these vents out and transfer those onto the back of this one there. They, they'll just go on there and you can see the little screw points there. So I'm gonna get those screwed on now, get those transferred across, get the little metal clips that I need transferring across to wherever done, and then get Wilkins we'll start getting ready and have a look at this bag of wires here to see where everything plugs in. That's all those transferred across. I've transferred across the little clips as well. The same on that bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty out this bag of wiring here. I'm not gonna look at the instructions. I'm gonna take these wires here, take the wires, uh, all the plugs I can find that I unplugged earlier and just try and do it without any instructions just to see how difficult it is to try and figure out how to wire this thing up. So let's go for it. First, I'm gonna try and find the bits that plug into these bits here. So I'm gonna search through all these looms here, find the bits that plug into there, and then kind of work backwards to the radio until I've got no more plugs left. Right, came across a little issue, so I had to stop for a while. Right, so what's happened is uh, Sikane somehow sent me the wrong looms. So I contacted them and they sent me the right looms. What they've done here is the main power looms. This is, this is where we got to, uh, these, two there they plug into the back of the radio system and then these looms here need to plug into those plugs and then plug into the new stereo uh, these are a different type of plug uh, looking at this can bus decoder uh, on the code of it it says fir uh, 13 to 14 fiesta so i'm assuming all this is for a, a newer model but i got in touch with Sikane. they got straight back to me their technical support um, asked me a few questions, I sent them a few photos and they realised they'd sent me the wrong loom kit so they sent the right ones across, I got those straight across uh, there's the new CAN bus decoder as you can see this one this one says FOR, I'm assuming it's Ford, uh, 9 to 12 so uh, 2009 to 2012 so this should plug in to the back and this one should plug in uh, to those two plugs there so that's what I'm gonna do now. This other bag, this is for all the GPS aerials and all that sort of stuff. That stays the same. It's just the power. So I'm gonna go back to the car now and we'll carry on where we left off. I'll see you back in the car. Actually, that one doesn't belong there. That's uh, part of the radio, so I need that one. So this is just the power ones. These are the ones that were wrong. Those ones, and these are the ones that were right. Uh, that's for audio inputs and cameras and things like that later. See you back in the car. Right, here we are, back at the car. I've got all that stripped out. I've fitted that little top bit ready. Uh, I've got the looms there, the stereos down there. I've got the vents fitted again. So let's get this plugged in and see if we can get it to work. Right, as you can see, this one's for that display. 
these ones were plugged into the back of the original stereo unit uh, this one plugged into this control panel here and then we've got the one for the antenna there so what I'll do first is I'll take this power loom what we've got is this this is the power loom from the new stereo uh, this has got the CAN bus decoder plugged into it so let's plug this in to wherever it fits into so that plugs in there I've got another one this look looks like this so let's plug that one in that's plugged into the display I'm going to keep everything coming out the top because of the angle that that sits in it looks like everything plugs in like here this sort of height and then stuffs back in so if I stuff everything back in there I've got this one to go in the back of the radio this one to go in the back of the radio uh, next I've got this uh, aux in plug this one plugs into here with the look of it I'm assuming um, I've got an auxiliary input further down near the handbrake so I'm assuming this is into the back of there I never use it anyway but we can we can get it ready so if I get this loom with all the aux inputs uh, I've got aux in left aux in right I'll plug those in there those in there and then we've got another loom ready to go in the back of the stereo this one's got all the inputs for the reversing cameras and the the tv out and all that sort of stuff you know so if you've got headrest tvs and all that sort of thing subwoofer output uh, i'm not using any of that at all so literally all i need is that aux in and so i've got a power there power there one there let's plug these into the back of the stereo see if we can get it to power up right if we look here the back of the stereo we've got the main power input there and then these are the auxiliary ins and outs for everything else uh, down here i've got the loom plugged in ready we'll plug that in now actually uh, this one is for the buttons at the front as you can see we've got the lock and i've got the uh, hazard lights there so if i get these now let me see if i can move this camera around a bit better angle right so if i get this power we'll plug this power in here like so uh, these should only fit into one place really this one's got four pins so it looks like it goes in there uh, this has got a load of pins so I'm assuming that one goes in the top. Oh, one more, because this has got the Wi-Fi antennas, so I can connect it to my Wi-Fi at home and uh, make sure we've got internet and everything else. So we'll put that in for the antennas. Uh, there's another, that's for the camera in look. Uh, we've not got a camera on this, so we'll leave it as it is. So if I plug that in like that, uh, let's see if it powers up. Right, ignition on. Android, we've got something. Looks like it's powering up. It's the first time, so it might take a while. There we are, we've got something coming up on the screen there now. So what I'll do is before we go any further, let's get everything else plugged in that we need to get plugged in. I'm assuming these are for, you see there, look, we've got a little SIM. You can put a SIM card in there and make this so it's it's always a phone, regardless of, of your own phone. In here I've got some 4G antennas, there's, there's two of those to fit. Uh, the most important one for me is the GPS antenna because it will use the GPS on the radio instead of the one on the phone to make it more accurate. Uh, so what I'll do is if I move this out of the way a little bit, I'll get this GPS antenna. And we'll stick it up behind the dash so I'm going to stick that up behind this cover there so it's up and it can see nicely all right so that can sit there get that plugged in 
This one says GPS on it, so we'll plug it in there. I'll plug these in, but I'll never need them. So I'll not bother too much about what I'm going to do with them. It's just if they're plugged in, then I don't lose them, do I? So I'll literally, I'll plug both of those in and I'll just throw them behind there. I won't stick them to anything. The thing we do need is this little antenna. So if I get the original antenna, plug that converter onto it. Plug this into the antenna slot. We've got an antenna there ready. Uh, the only other plugs left are these two USB ones here. I'm assuming these are for if you want to plug in a hard drive or a memory stick or something like that or any other extras because this, I think this does quite a few little bits and bobs. What I might do is plug one in and I might run the wire out to the uh, to the glove box. So what I'll do is I'll plug that in, I'll run it back. Once we've done that, uh, just down here, you see these clips we've got. We've got these clips that push in there, one for the other side, and then I'll be able to push that back and we'll get it back into position. So I'm going to run this cable out and then I'll meet you back here and we'll push this back in and get it back in and working. Right, so there we are. I've got the cables in. This is ready to be pushed back. I ran that USB cable out to here, so that's in the glove box if I ever need it. Uh, these little clips here, I need to push these on. So if I just clip those into place behind this panel, then in theory, we should be able to push this back now and get it all to push into place. So let's do that. Right, that's clipped back in. Just need to put this little clip on under there. Then I can clip this little door back in. There we are. What I'll do is I'll have a little play with it. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to use it. Right, there we are. I've got it all set up. Let's have a quick look around it, shall we? Right, if we go back to the home screen, this is what you get welcomed with. This is the first screen that comes on. As you can see at the bottom, uh, it's tied in to the heating controls. Uh, I'm assuming, depending on what your car does, it'll, it'll tie in different, depending on the model and things like that. If we press it, it syncs up with, it, with everything. So, so we, we've, got, we've got all the general controls. I can't control it back from here. Um, I'm assuming that's down to your car as well because it's got all that heated seats and things like that but my car hasn't got all that uh, it runs on the android 10 system uh, there's a new model out now we'll discuss that later which is running on the the, the 12 um, but anyway this one runs on the android 10 as you can see it's got all the apps and everything like usual We've got all the equaliser settings. Uh, I've got it set on the SRS. It gives a, a nice little surround sound feel to it. Um, so there's lots of things there you can have a you can have a play with. I've got it set up to my Bluetooth and everything else. I've synced all my accounts up, all the Google accounts, so everything works as it should now. Radio, I don't really use this, but. As you can see there, we've got the radio. Uh, if you scan through, I'll turn it off. I'm obviously turning it off, the sound because of copyright, etc. Uh, but it finds its next stations. And then you can press and hold and it saves those say, stations in. If we go here, we can cancel the apps and everything else like usual. When it first starts up, it starts up with this screen which I'm assuming if you've got cameras and everything else plugged in, it'll pull up all that sort of stuff. Because when I put the car in reverse, 
it comes up straight with that screen so I'm assuming that's got a, a camera view there of the rear view when I'm in reverse but I've not got a camera plugged in I might plug one in one day but to be honest I hate this car so I probably won't uh, you've got your navigation and everything else if you go through your settings uh, these are the settings for this stereo so this device port if you click on there you can pick each one of those little plugs on the back and it tells you what all the pins are system information there uh, you've got your android settings that takes you into the android setup menu volume settings uh, for when you're doing your hands-free calling, etc., and then you can you you can set up other 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 menus. Obviously, we've got steering wheel learn. Uh, this is automatically set up to mine. So, if I press my volume up and down on the steering wheel, you can see the volume going up and down there on the stereo system itself. But for me personally, I don't use any of this because I use Apple CarPlay. I'm on an Apple iPhone. Uh, if we go across the end, it's got Z-Link there. This will remember this once you've started it. So if you start this and you turn off the stereo system like that, when you turn it back on, it'll automatically log back in. So this is your typical uh, screen for your, your CarPlay, the same as any other. You can press this and hide this top menu if you want or you can just leave it like this and go through to, to your usual apps and everything else as per normal CarPlay, which is exactly how I use it in all my cars. I use TomTom Tom Navigation um, just because I prefer it. I, prefer, I actually prefer it because when you're navigating, it's got the little bar up the side and it tells you all the traffic and everything. So it tells you how long you, you're going to be for the traffic. So that's why I use that. And that's about it, really. Uh, obviously, it'll do a lot more depending on what your car does and how it integrates with your car. Um, but for me, all I need it to do is wireless Apple CarPlay, and I'm happy. I can what I because because then just like normal, what I can do is I've got my navigation, I've got my music, I've got my hands-free calling. I don't need anything else. So for me, that's fine. Right, since me being given this stereo unit, there's some new models out now that sit more up on the dash with like a little curved screen, and it, it runs on uh, Android 12, I think it is, so I can't com comment on them. This particular one for me, I've used it for a couple of days now, and it's, 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 it's been okay. It does what I need it to do. It's not perfect. It's, sometimes it's a little bit janky, but uh, it, it's, it's, working, it's working fine for what I need it to do. I can't comment on the new ones, obviously. I'm assuming they're a faster processor, everything else, so they, they should be better than this one. But for this one, it's good enough for what I need it to be. I'll stick the links down below to uh, where these come from, so you can have a look. I can't stick the link down to this exact one, because now it's been replaced with the newer uh, curved screen one. Um, but you can have a look around the website and see what you think. If I can find any discount codes, I'm sure I'd some. I'll stick those in the description as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you, you want to see more. Um, it's a bit varied between my car stereos, the, my MR2, my camper and everything else. So subscribe, like the video if you liked it and I'll catch you guys in another video. Cheers.